the people so I'm gonna show you how to replace a actuation motor for the like HVAC system there's a bunch of them behind this uh, glove box here um, for the HVAC they control like the the recirculation flap the temperatures um, the which vents get air etc um, pretty straightforward process super simple um, I've got a code for the recirc flap I already fixed the one for the central air flap that controls you know where the air goes um, so I'm, I'm gonna go in and figure I'd make a video showing you how to do this one while I'm at it and uh, the first thing you want to do is re is remove the glove box obviously to get behind there um, there's I don't even know how many screws uh, let's see um, you got a bunch of eight millimeter head screws so one two three see the one back there four five these ones up under here kind of sneaky six seven um, and then got the standard broken glove box on the B7A4s. Uh, there's two more down here, one and two. And then you basically just pull this side little panel off here. Um, and then the whole assembly will drop down and then you have a couple of uh, connectors you can rem uh, unplug if you want to remove the glove box and get it out of your way. Um, I'm just gonna leave it in the way so that I can, uh, because it's not really a huge deal, so. Um, yeah, like I said, eight millimeter, uh, heads on those. This is kind of the setup I'm using to use power tools, or you could just use like a quarter drive ratchet. Um, this is a lot quicker though with how many of those are and they're kind of a fine thread. So, um, eight millimeter, seven millimeter extension. One of these swivel heads helps if you're using power tools. Otherwise, yeah, just using a quarter drive is going to be just fine. So remove all those, you drop that, and then, uh, you'll see, all those actuators inside. Once you have the glove box removed, you'll see all these different actuators in here. Um, I used my Autel here to run through an active test and actuate each one. And I could tell that this is the one that wasn't working, which also obviously looks like the uh, HVAC flap um, so uh, actuator. So I just ran through, made sure I saw movement on each one of these. And then I could hear the one on the driver's side for the driver's side temp. So I knew all those were working. And so it left me with this one. Um, so that's how I knew how to replace this one for the HVAC uh, code that the Autel was giving me. To remove that, super simple. Just remove that clip right there. You just push in that little tab, pull out, and then um, it's just one screw here. As you can see, it's already been loosened and this screw back here that I've also loosened right on top. Uh, you can kind of see it right there, already loosened. Uh, the third one on this one doesn't have a screw, it's just a slide on pin, if you can see that there. So, so essentially you just take this under the actuator, pops right up. Pops out, you'll do that with the old one as well. Pop it right back into there, I'm gonna go. And to remove the cover, you just look at these tabs right here all around it and take a little flathead like this you will prime up in like that and you'll see the cover lifts up over them you're basically pushing this tab in and then sliding this up and then lifting you will do that to all these tabs just work your way around kind of use your finger to keep it open and then I usually finish on this side over here and then the whole lid just pops right off and then you're essentially going to swap this out with this on both of them they just lift right off and then you'll notice this is pointed the same direction as that. You kind of want to make sure that that's clocked properly. Now this is in the new one. You just want to make sure that those pins are all set in there properly, as you can see. And then it's sitting flush. It just slides on, slides off, a little flathead screwdriver. So I just turned the key back on. Um, you'll see a lot of these actuating. This will usually um, run through an actuation the first time you plug it in. Um, that's normal. It's like, I think it's just calibrating that, uh, the position on the wheel. Um, and then what you can do is go ahead and test which function that wasn't working. So for me, it's the recirc there. And sure enough, it works. Back off. So yeah, that's working. I've done it with this one now, and I've also done it with this one, the central flap. Uh, actuator there you can tell that's also not an Audi original part um, like these all are so 
Um, yeah, that's how you replace it. Just put the uh, glove box back in reverse order. And so here's that code that I was getting for the uh, race circ flat motor there. Uh, I'm gonna erase, I'm gonna erase it now that I've replaced it. And run it through a couple times um, so you can see it's clear. If I hit read codes here, no trouble codes. I'll go ahead and cycle that through. Back here again a couple times. Run for a sec. Let it cycle back. I'm gonna go ahead and read codes here. Still no trouble codes. And just for kicks and giggles, more ignition off and on. Run it again. Again. Read codes one more time. No codes. So it did work for me without the uh, swapping the internals. Um, it still actuated like normal, um, but I would still get the code. So that's kind of up to you if you want to try swapping that out. It's super easy. I think it's worth it to avoid, you know, having the code stay there. And uh, yeah, other than that, you're good to go.